lot of time uh, this morning. Let's get Dr. Hoa Wen of the uh, Governor's Physicians Advisory Group. Uh, good morning, Doc. Uh, good morning, guys. Good morning. So, you had your meeting yesterday? Uh, yes, we, we did. Uh-huh. Okay, so what happened? Well, we just um, went over the, the new the testing guideline that uh, we try to implement. Uh, we kind of approach things a little bit different way. Um, since we have the ability to do more tests, I guess, sometime at uh, the end of this month, which is next week, um, or the, the, uh, or the beginning of May. So in the past, you know, when we have the, um, uh, the, we don't have the ability to do testing, uh, you no, know, everyone else, um, we just say when you're going to use sick, that you can, you know, uh, just stay at home uh, and, unless you have problems, severe problems, and you come in for us to test. Now that we uh, have the ability to test a little bit more, we will tell aggressive people that if you are feeling ill, that you come in and we can test you. That way we can kind of cast a bigger net to see what the prevalence of the disease out of the community. So, Doc, so just to, to be uh, clear, people out there who are listening, who are feeling sick, uh, can call their doctor and you guys can uh, give them a test. Yeah, that's some, some a lot of um, other test sites in you know, the public health um, have test sites coming up, and then the private clinic can also do testing. Uh, so if you're ill, that, you, know, you can call your physician. If they have the ability to test there, you can come in for them to, to uh, do the testing for you. Uh, Doc, I know that in talking about this uh, new, I guess we can call it a relaxed uh, testing criteria, uh, what, what is that criteria? Are you able to lay it out for us? You know, it's um, much more relaxed. If you have any, you know, uh, UI symptoms like cough, uh, congestion, um, you know, diffuse body, exhale, throat, um, the, the loss of taste and smell, uh, those, um, you, know, you can meet the criteria to be testing already. You know, you've done in the past, you know, those mild symptoms, we don't really want to test it because we don't have the ability to test in the past. But now that, you know, the, um, the labs and the DOS and public health and GRMC and GMA can do the test, you know, um, we can do more tests now. And I can say we just like casting a bigger net to try to do the prevalence of the disease in the community now. Right. I think Dr. Uh, Felix Cabrera went over that uh, yesterday. But is there any information you have on how this pilot program is going to launch on Saturday in Estumbo? Yeah, you know, that's part of the program. But it's targeted to certain criteria of people. That, you know, a lot of people don't have the ability to drive to a clinic or reach a clinic for, uh, for multiple reasons, either because of transportation or or uh, any type of means. So Asumbo uh, stood up as a pilot program to try to target those people that cannot leave where they are, you know, to go to the clinic. So let's see how it goes this Saturday. Understand that that's just, a, like I said, a pilot program. So it's, uh, if it's successful, then they can stand up more program after that. Uh, Doc, you know, so the governor had said she wanted to start testing 250-some people a day this week. Uh, is that just going to happen on Saturday, or are we uh, shooting for that, that goal, you know, today? Um, we can set a goal of uh, 250, but like I can say it depends on, on if people show up or not. You know, I mean, um, uh, we can have the test kit there, but um, if um, only like 10, 20 people show up, then that's all you can do, you know, so... Um, it would be, I guess, announced publicly, so like the people that have, don't have the means to or want to be tested now, they can come into the Sumbo and do the testing there. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but, you know, we still, um, you know, the, the, the ability to test is there, again, is pending on the supply and um, uh, have to be in place before we can do that number. You know, from right now, the supply that we might have shortage is the, the transfer media. You know, just like we call PCM is the, the one that, that you do the test and you have to transport that kit to the lab to be run. And this is for anybody who is experiencing mild symptoms or has these, these COVID symptoms? That this is who this uh, uh, test pilot test program is for in the Stumbo? Yes. Uh, no, in the, like I said, in the past, the, the, the criteria has 
very restricted and have to follow, you know, CDC mm-hmm. guidelines in the past. And you have to have, like, you know, fever, shortness of breath, chest pain. You have to be certain, of, um, meet certain comorbidity like blood pressure, diabetes, and cholesterol and heart disease. Now, is there anyone that have any type of upper respiratory infection, like I say, cough, congestion, sore throat, loss of taste and smell, abdominal pain, uh, those are the, the stuff that we encourage people to come in just because now we need to kind of find out more, you know, what's the rates out there. And it's just like cash or bigger than that. So, right, right. Uh, I, no, I just wanted to make people, make, yeah. make sure it was clear who was supposed to go to, uh, are, they, are they going door to door or are they setting up a location for people to come to? Well, I understand it's a location, so it's not door to door. It's just we require a whole lot of manpower to do door to door. Yeah. So we just like there's one location and they just come. Uh, and I was, I mean, um, the criteria relax a whole lot. You know, like said, the message in the past, you know, if you're sick, stay home. Right. Um, and the reason you do that because you don't have that much test kit. You know, now that. Uh, everyone stand up. We have much more ability to find out the true rate of infection. We can encourage them to come out. So that way, if, you, if I tell you that you have it, you know, now we can really isolate and track and, and trace the people to try to prevent them from spreading the infection in the community. Mm-hmm. Where is this going to be at? Uh, the other location is not announced yet last night. I know it's in a similar area, but uh, I don't know the location. You know, public health to try to talk to the mayor uh, to try to, to, to finalize the location for this weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, doc, we're just getting some uh, comments here. What if you don't have a private doctor or insurance? What about uh, those people? Oh, those, those test guys are totally free. Absolutely any testing for COVID-19, shouldn't, you, know, you shouldn't pay anything at all. You know, the, um, it's, it's free. It's, you don't charge anyone to to for, for the test, you know, just including people that go to the, the tier two location right now, um, it didn't cost you anything to go there. Okay, I think that's how we marketed. You know, people in Guam they love free stuff, so we should just do a big campaign: free COVID nineteen <laughs> testing. Show up. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think that any you no know, COVID nineteen testing should be charged. You know, this right. is a. It's an infection that, that we try to control in Guam and everywhere else in the world. So no one should charge you know, to, do, to do the test at all. Mm-hmm. Is this kind of like the study you were talking about uh, last week? No, no, that's, that's different. That's okay. a study for, for public health and, uh, uh, and UOG as a part of it. And, and some you know, physician, that's, that's part of serology testing back up by the PCR test. That's different. You know, mm-hmm. um, this is the, the PCR testing that the company test. So uh, this is different. Yeah, just because, like I say, we have um, uh, four different places now that can run the test. So might as well just use them all. Right. Okay. Uh, Doc, how many test kits do we have? Because you said that we now have the capacity, and before we were limiting the priority, uh, the testing to the limited priority group. Uh, so now that we're widening this criteria, what do we have in the inventory that's ready to go? Uh, that's the question. <laughs> like I say, when we have the machine, uh, I think the, the most important and the limiting factor right now is the transport media. So that's the, that's the only one. So are, you, is it, is, are you talking about the cooler or something, Doc, that with the dry uh, ice? No. What is it? What yeah. are you talking about? We, we call it VPM. Uh, you know, how, what I can tell you in the straight language is that you know when you do the nasal pharyngeal swap of your nose there you know you have to put the swap inside this tube that has the liquid in there I see. and we and that is the tube that transport to the lab to uh, for the lab to run your test and right now that's the limiting factor not the machine anymore because we have enough here in Guam actually we are pretty good shape regarding machine wise and the ability to do tests compared to the rest of the U.S. Right. Pending that we have enough VPM to go around for everyone to do testing. Well, how how limiting is that going to be? Because we're anticipating rolling out and you know possibly testing hundreds, if not you know. I, I mean, uh, I'm guessing our goal is we're going to try and test you know uh, 250 people a day. 258. 
258 people a day. So if we don't have the uh, VPNs, how many of those do we have, uh, Doc? Do you know? Uh, we I don't know the the, the number. You know, but, um, the those packs with me is um, is available through um, uh, DOS and public health. So um, uh, that's where you know you initially you might have enough, but then if you do that much, you might run out. Just because like I can say it's it's not just Guam. Right. Uh, it's the rest of where else that uh, that's a limited factor. Mm -hmm. So we have the machines. What two at GRMC, uh, one at GMH, and two at uh, Public Health. So total. Uh, yes. Okay. So d do you know how many test kits uh, we have? I know they're different kinds. The the Gene Expert test kits. Did those ever come in? Uh, I understand that um, they come in already, and um, this is the four thousand. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to be all ready um, uh, by, the, you, no, you're talking about the, the rapid test kit. That, that's, that doesn't count. You know, okay. this is, you know, that's, um, that's a wholesaler in the, in the public, but that's, that's a different type. You know, I'm talking about just the run out of the, the public health, you mm -hmm. know, DLS and GRMC mm -hmm. and, G and GMH only. Those are, that's the only one we're talking about. Right. Okay, so but these these do have the ability to do same day results. I mean, it may take a couple hours, like how we're getting them currently, right? Oh yeah, it's just some it's the same day results. You know, the, especially the Abbott test kit, I and mean, those things uh, you can have the positive in about three four minutes. Mm -hmm. wow. This so is the Abbott bad. ID now. Yes, we have two of them. So this is the one that's a GMH and then GRMC. Yes. Uh huh. And those, those things are very fast. You know, negative is only about 10 minutes and positive about, you know, two to four minutes you have the resort already. What about that BD, is it BD Max? Yeah, the B, uh, BD Max, and those take longer. It's not as fast as the Apple test kit. Okay. Uh, that's, and that's uh, the one that GRMC has? Uh, yes. Uh, no, I think GRMC has the, the Gene Expert. I think that's the that's okay. the model. Yeah, those, those take longer to run. But, um, yeah, I think they hopefully if we can have more of the Abbott uh, rapid test kit, then those, those things are really nice device. Uh, Doc, so do all of the, so the Abbott ID and all, the, do they all require the use of the VPN that you stick the sample in? Yes, they all require the, the use of VPN. So we could have a million test kits, but if we don't have enough uh, VPNs to put the test swabs in, then it's kind of a moot issue. Or are there, w are there ways to work around that? I think right now this um, they try to come up with a way to use different type of um, uh, nasal pharyngeal swab that don't have to use that spec that 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 VPN. But um, I don't know. Well, I think right now that's all we have, and that's all the rest of the U.S. have. Mm. So, you know, like I say, that's a, that's a question that we have to uh, uh, be uh, very good at um, managing the inventory, make sure we have enough of those things to run. Doc, can I, uh, on the testing, because I, I, I wanted to just uh, kind of find out uh, just more on the, the testing for the COVID-19 side. Uh, because we're getting a lot of negatives. Is is there any science or what can you tell us about when you test somebody for COVID-19 and how long they've been infected and, and uh, how that relates to the amount of the virus that they have in them that would uh, trigger a reading on a test kit? Because I was just reading last night that uh, depending on how long someone has been infected, there might not be enough of the virus in there to get something to, to swab. Is, can you just uh, you maybe go into the weeds on that and explain that to us? Yeah, uh, that's the question is uh, when can you test and if you test negative is that uh, that mean that you don't have the virus and that's a million dollar question is because the viral load sometime at the front end of it you don't have enough vi viral load to turn positive but uh, doesn't mean that the next week when you test again that you won't turn positive so the question is when do we do enough tests to kind of uh, pick up the true positive I tell you, because no one has the right answer for that one. I mean, there's, uh, there's going to be a combination of uh, serology tests and the PCR molecular test, but uh, it has to be a combination. Um, right now, um, the question where the ratio and the mix of those two 
uh, to truly identify the, the person that is positive. Um, that's not really a good FDA approved serology test yet right now. Uh, so I think that even in the States, um, uh, they still try to juggle on that ratio in order to give you a better uh, um, no, number, the true number. So let's say that you come in today and you have a congestion cough and you just get sick like a day or two. Um, they might not have enough viral load in all the people in the term positive. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and that's, um, it's not 100%, uh, like I say, depend on the viral load. So some people might have it. Uh, and some people might not have it. So that's that's the what's that's the, like the, the I mean, is there like a, a percentage doc, like an accuracy rate with these tests that we're using? Just uh, because it, it kind of seems like what you're saying is if um, you know I've got a loss of taste or you know sense of smell or whatever, I go in, I get tested, I'm negative. I that kind of seems like you're saying that that might not even mean that I'm really negative. You know, I think the specificity and sensitivity of those tests are very, very high. So I didn't mean that they're talking any negative thing about them. They're very high. It's just that if you don't have the viral load when you come in, then you might have negative. But uh, like I said, I mean, those, those numbers are very, very small. But we just want to be aware that, hey, you know, if, um, if you have a symptom, we tell you negative. But, you know, just have to kind of watch yourself and isolate yourself against uh, your family, other people, so you don't spread the, 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 the virus to other people. I said the key here is to identify them, um, you know, bring them out so we know the true rate out there. Yeah. And tell them, hey, you stay home. By this time, you know, and you can track and trace all the contact. Uh, unlike before, that you know, if you have the virus and you have mild symptoms, especially young, that tell you stay home, and you might not stay home. But if you know you have it, the most likely chance that you will stay home and comply, you know, that's, that's the thing. So you don't spread out to the people around your house and your neighbor or the community if you go somewhere. Uh, Doc, we got a comment here, and I know this is something the governor uh, touched on. Uh, it was uh, people don't want to get tested because they don't want to get thrown into quarantine. Uh, you know, the, the testing, the, the quarantine is... is um, as a volunteer quarantine, you know, we tell people, we encourage them if they're positive that to stay home. And I say against the family. It's not like you got thrown into a hotel and it's a, it's a involuntary quarantine. It's not, you know. Um, so it's, it's not a concern. You just want to know if you have or not. But no one is going to lock you in one place to quarantine you. But if you're, if uh, public health goes to your house and they uh, make a determination that your house uh, is not able to sustain a CDC recommended, uh, you know, self isolation uh, because there's, you know, it doesn't have its own bathroom or whatever, and then the governor had said that at that point they would uh, stick you in the facility. Yeah, you know that's that's an elective thing. You know, and um, Chris and Sabrina, the, the things like this. If you know that you're positive. And you, if you live in a household good that have a very young children, or you have an elderly, or someone living in your household good that have a high risk um, of have complication from the infection, uh, of course, you know they're going to talk to you, and they're going to explain to you, educate you. So that's the reason why they recommend that you stay in a hotel or quarantine during the isolation, you know, along with one person in your family, so that way that you can take, you know, you don't transfer that infection to a person that have a high risk of to have complications from this. You know, you don't want your your parents or your grandmother, your grandfather to have complications end up in the hospital. So that's the key. So, and uh, they're not going to take you in a police car. They're going to explain that to you. So you, <laughs> you, at least you, you have an option and you have more educated no decision that hey, this is for the best of my family. It's, it's, it's not that the governor tried to force you to do something. If she tried to protect you away from your family, that you can give to someone, your loved one, and make them sick. So that's a protection the governor want to give to you. It's not to force you. Mm -hmm. 
I, I just wanted just some, some more clarification about what's going to happen on Saturday. When when people come in and they get swabbed, are they going to find out the results uh, there or they're going to have to wait? until uh, Where are these samples going to be taken? You know, that's, um, you know, I'm not quite sure on that one, but I'm pretty sure you find out you know, the same day the next day. You know, that that's the goal is to give you an, an answer very, very quick so that way, you know, the public health team can go out there and contact you and do the tracing mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, the, the thing here is get that turnaround time really quick so that way they can, uh, you know, they can do the job. These Abbott IDs, are they mobile? Are you able to, to take them to Estumbo or they have to stay in the lab? Yeah, that, that looks like it's pretty mobile. It's a pretty small, small device. Yeah. yeah, they not, you know... Um, so you don't know if that's the plan to bring the Abbott ID um, yeah, that's now a, to Estumbo? I asked this question last night, but, um, I, but the key here is to get that resort out as soon as possible. So they're not going to, you know... Um, sit there and prioritize and run or wish over a high priority for they're going to run the goal to the firm to run this test. So I'm pretty sure it's the same day, the next day they find out already. So mm. um, that's the wonderful part is the ability to complete the test and let you know right away. Yeah. That, yeah. I just wasn't sure how this is, yeah. you know, the specifics of how this is, was all going to go down because if you're saying that the Abbott ID can, can give you results within two minutes and they're also deployable, then you could ideally just bring the Abbott ID to wherever this place is in Estumbo and then give people their results. Yeah, and you so can keep a running tally. Mm -hmm. And that, that's something that I think from that discussion to see if we can request more of those Abbott you know, uh, ID tests, the device here. You know, so that's really wonderful. That's um, it's so fast. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Well, Doc, uh, when we do this testing on Saturday, do you think we're going to get zero positives? Uh, um, hope. Everyone hopes. You know, uh, that's the thing. You know, so far, uh, the last um, seven days or so is, is very good. Like I say, when, um, this weekend is, uh, is the uh, um, probably a high night because it's the Easter weekend, you know, um, uh, it's, it's seven to you know five to fourteen days there, so we see this weekend hold true from uh, all the zero testing or not. Mm -hmm. Do do you know what the sample size is? Uh, like I say, depend on how many people show up, uh, guys. I mean, we can put the the the, um, the location and the availability out there. It depends on how many people show up for the testing uh, and. So that's why, you know, it's going to be in one area where people have uh, limitation on access to a clinic. So that way we can see, it's like I say, it's a pilot program to see if we can put the you know, uh, test location of pockets around warm. But it's easier for people to access the test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was I was just curious because I'm just wondering what contingencies are in place if, if the sample size is say 200, and you have 100 or so that test positive, and the people that are coming out um, that take these tests don't have, I guess, the CDC requirements for home isolation. Right, they're not going to we because we're talking the, about vulnerable population of you know people living in poverty, like a lot of people. Because you have to have you know the the separate bathroom in the room. You know what I mean. I think that you know, they that have the cures on different hotels who are warm mm -hmm. um, for for isolation. Who, for isolation, uh, if the people wish to to leave the house and go and stay there uh, for isolation. So, um, like I said, I mean, those are, are, are public health when they come out to a, a positive finding and they talk to the family. Uh, as part of them educate the people and the family and the family on, on, on what um, what their option is and let the family choose the option. You know, well, it, like I said, it's not a forced quarantine. You know, they're going to explore everything with the family uh, to make sure the family understand, you know, what the idea of isolation and how to go back to do that. Um, you know, in light of how the the house is, you know, the household good in Guam is pretty unique. Sometimes you have 
multi multi generation that have like two or three gen four generation in one house. Yeah. yeah. And you know and and you have one person that is positive and you have um uh some family member that is a high risk, of course they're gonna try to educate you and let you pick the best option to protect your family. Mm-hmm. And that's the key. Is is um is the is for the family you know, um, protection is not, you know, um, they're not going to force you. Mm-hmm. So if you you have a two, a one, w- one bedroom home and uh, someone tests positive in that household, you well, can you can make the decision, well, I'm just going to stay here and, you know, you're not going to put them into isolation, uh, into an isolation most, facility? That's not the most logical decision but mm-hmm. you know if that's the case they're going to test everybody in the family very careful and make sure that it didn't transmit to other family member within the household good okay I, 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 yeah okay yeah i mean good luck yeah, with that yeah I, that's I, a tough one i don't know i think if, yeah. if we got to protect the public and put these people in a isolation facility because uh, they're living in a house that, uh, you know, mm-hmm. and that's going to be so many people, Doc. It's a good question, Bree. So, I, I don't know. I think that we got to do what we got to do to protect the public. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, we live in a free country. and it's, uh, <laughs> Sometimes. It's, uh, <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can't force people to do things. You know, even <laughs> the roadblock is a very good idea, but a lot of people doesn't like it. And I understand that some people sue the governor, which I have no idea why. But, you know, well, it's a free country, and it's, it's hard to implement that you know i think the part of it uh uh some place like vietnam or a place that um that control is very well because you don't have a choice right yeah, yeah. Uh, doc, and i don't even think that was coming from a bad place but no. you know for yeah whatever. i mean it's reality <laughs> yeah. uh we had someone here comment uh if it does the government foot the bill if you have to go and stay in an isolation facility absolutely it doesn't cost the person any okay. uh, the government will foot the bill to put you in in a place of isolation in order to be, for you to be safe against right. your family. Yeah. So no, it, it didn't cost the public anything. It is just, you know, come from federal or put the bill. It didn't cost anyone okay. anything to stay at the hotel. So, Doc, uh, Bree, anything else? No, uh, no. I'm in closing, uh, the message has been, if you're sick, stay home, stay home, stay home. Uh, so now we're changing the message. Am I correct to say that the message is now, if you are sick, call your doctor, go get tested. Everybody get tested. Everybody get tested. Right, so that they can see just how prevalent COVID-19. Right. And don't wait till Saturday at Astumbo. If uh, you're sick, you have any mild symptoms uh, that, you know, Doc again uh, told us about, call the physician, go get tested. It's free. Mm-hmm. It's free. It's free. It's, it's totally free. And also, another message would, that we like to put out to Chris is that uh, the chronic care management, you know, um, um, we're going to encourage the people that have chronic um, illness like high blood pressure, diabetes, and cholesterol and heart disease, and that they need to still contact the physician in order to continue the care for that. You know, but the thing that uh, GRMC was mentioning is that they see a new way for non-COVID patient hit the emergency room uh, because of complication of those chronic illness that they run out of medication or they too scared to go to the to, uh, to their doctor's to clinic to uh, to continue their care. So that's something we want to pass out to you know a lot own the clinic now to take extra precaution to protect the, the, the wellness of the patient uh, so you won't sit around other people that have illness. So um, we put the message for the chronic care management for chronic for people that have those chronic illness to please call your doctor and, and, and make the effort to come in and see them. So that way uh, we prevent the non-COVID complications that hit the emergency room and admission beside the COVID patient. I did have a question. Um, I know Dr. Lewis Cruz is in charge of like the the alternate care facilities and and um, things like that. But is there an update on any of that? Um, what's going on with Surgery Center, the 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 Vinagodzen, um 
uh, facilities that are being constructed. And then you have the, the Naval Hospital, Tent City type hospital that's being constructed. You know, um, those are planned for the war scenario, mm-hmm. guys, and it still continue on the planning stage and okay. some of them are in place. It's just like anywhere else. I heard the news like yesterday in Florida, there's a lot of uh, the stand up hospital that sits empty right now, mm-hmm. uh, which is, is, no, I know it costs a lot, but like I say, everyone stands for the worst and pray for the for the best, right? So, uh, yeah, those efforts do continue. Okay, yeah, because it, it just again going back to Astumbo, if you if you do a large sample size and then you do have a high number of positives, hopefully not, um, where would you put everybody? Yeah, you you, know, you have a lot of places, including Guamson Center, and you know you pass by Nick Tam, you see lots of panics there. You know, there's a whole uh, little portable hospital mm-hmm. stand up there uh, to support the Navy, and once the Navy um, um, case is over, you know, those remain open for us to use mm-hmm. in case of... When, when is that going to be, Doc? Because, I mean, geez, they're looking at, what, almost 700 positive uh, cases? I think the... Positive cases. Uh, Manini yeah. said that it's almost um, uh, Yeah, finished. I mean, you, you, you pass by Nick Tam and you go to the hospital, those things are up already. I mean, yeah. They, yeah. They, uh, so they are there. Like I say, they're not going to put them away once the Navy move out of here. You know, they they still going to remain open in case of one needed, so they they here to support us. Yeah. Uh, Doc, again, the, the uh, comment here: no insurance, no problem. No for, insurance, for testing. no problem. Right. Yeah. Yes, it's free. I got it. Okay. You guys need to to loop us in, and we'll help market this thing, and we get a crowd <laughs> out. You know, that's what that's kind of what we do. That's what you want, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's why. Why? That's why. We're, that's why I'm on the radio with you for is to, for to help, you know, to help us. They'll put out this public you know, notice so people know that it doesn't cost anything. Okay. That's all you got to say. It's free. People are like, what? What's free? Okay, I'm the here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, serious, Doc. I'm serious. Okay. But thank you so much for passing out the message. Of Doc. course, okay. Dr. Hoa, thank you for giving us the message to pass out. You're welcome. Okay. okay. Did you drink your coffee already, Doc? You okay? No, nah, I'm not. It's okay. You wake me up this morning. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm up already. <laughs> okay, Doc. Thank you so much, and wash your hands, okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Okay. okay. There you go. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. There you go. So we have a new message for you guys. We are deputizing each and every one of you <laughs> watching out here. The new message is get tested. That's right. Get tested. Get tested. No insurance. No problem. Mm-hmm. It's totally free. All right, so if you have any anxiety, who doesn't? Who doesn't want to get tested? Yeah. You know what I mean? Is it uncomfortable? Yeah, they stick that swab up in your nose. It's a little uncomfortable. You're going to tear up. But, you know, we got this. We have the power to kill the curve. And, uh, you know, from what everyone's saying, the best way to kill the curve is to get tested. And this Saturday, there's going to be the pilot uh, program uh, testing at somewhere in Estumbo from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Hopefully we can get that information from today's press we conference. Will. We will. And th- what, what they're trying to do is they're trying to cast this wide net mm-hmm. to determine the prevalence of COVID-19 on Guam. Right. And so uh, the governor went out and, and made that commitment to the people that they're going to test 258 uh, people a day starting this week. And so I'm, I think that's going to be. We we don't know the sample size, but yeah. you could you could. But you, know, you guys can help. I mean, be. if we want to, if we have the capacity to test 250 some people a day, then go get tested, guys. Mm-hmm. Go get tested. Let's use up those test kits, or else it's just sitting there. Seven oh ten. Now we take a little break. Uh, it's the twenty second of uh, April. The KUM News takeover of Guam's favorite I ninety four. It's containing COVID. Good morning.